The philosophy that brought Herbert Spencer so much recognition and acclaim was Darwinism. The notion of evolution and the survival of the fittest. Spencer extended it far beyond Darwin's own work. Interest in Darwin's theory of evolution was intense in the United States and Darwin's ideas had been eagerly accepted. Evolutionary theory was embraced not only in universities and scholarly societies, but also in popular magazines and even some religious publications. It is interesting to note that support for the theory of evolution was much stronger in America in the 19th century than it is today. Surveys show consistently that as many as one-third of Americans do not support the idea of evolution, a level of rejection that is much higher than in any other developed nation. But in the days of Herbert Spencer, the notion of evolution was well accepted by the time Spencer came to New York. Spencer argued that the development of all aspects of the universe was evolutionary, including human character and social institutions. In Spencer's utopian view, if the principle of survival of the fittest were allowed to operate freely, then only the best would survive. Therefore, human perfection was irrevertible as long as no action was taken to interfere with the natural order of things. Individualism and a laissez-faire economic system were vital, whereas governmental attempts to regulate business and industry and welfare, even subsidies for education, housing, and the poor, were opposed. People and organizations were left alone to develop themselves and society in their own ways, just as other living species were left to develop and adapt to their natural environments. Any assistance from the state would interfere with the natural evolutionary process. People, programs, businesses or institutions that could not adapt were unfit for survival and should be allowed to perish or become extinct for the better of society as a whole. If government continued to support poorly functioning enterprises, then these enterprises would endure, ultimately weakening society and violating the basic law of nature that only the strongest and most fit shall survive. Again, Spencer's idea was that by enduring that only the best survived, society could eventually achieve perfection. This message was compatible with America's individualistic spirit and the phrases survival of the fittest and the struggle for existence quickly became part of the national consciousness. Spencer formulated a system he calls synthetic philosophy which is the idea that knowledge and experience can be explained in terms of evolutionary principles. Spencer's ideas were published in a series of 10 books between 1860 and 1897. They were hailed by many leading scholars of the time as works of genius. Although Darwin appreciated Spencer's work, he did not like him personally. He quoted, I think that he was extremely egotistical. Two of the volumes on synthetic philosophy constitute the principles of psychology published first in 1855 and later used by William James as a textbook for the first psychology course he taught at Harvard.
In his book, Spencer discussed the notion that the mind exists in its present form because of past and continuing efforts to adapt to various environments. He emphasized the adaptive nature of nervous and mental processes and wrote that an increase in complexity of experiences and hence of behavior is part of the normal evolutionary process. The organism needs to adapt to its environment if it is to survive. Much is a paradoxal about William James and his role in American psychology. His work was the major American pursuer of functional psychology and he was a pioneer of the new scientific psychology as it developed in the United States. James did not found functional psychology, but he presented his ideas clearly and effectively within the functionalist atmosphere that was pervading American psychology. In doing so, he influenced the functionalist movement by inspiring subsequent generations of psychologists. Striking at the heart of Vaughn's approach to psychology, James declared that simple sensations do not exist in conscious experience but exist only as a result of some process of interference or abstraction. James called for a new program for psychology. Mental life, he said, is a unity, a total experience that constantly changes. The mind also is continuous. There are no sharp disruptions in the flow of consciousness. We may notice gaps in time, such as when we are asleep, but are awakened, we have no difficulty making connection with our ongoing stream of consciousness. In addition, the mind is selective because we can pay attention to only a small part of our experiences at a time. The mind chooses from among the many stimuli to which it is exposed. Pursuing this idea, James distinguished between conscious choice and habit. He believed habits to be involuntary and non-conscious. When we encounter a new problem and need to choose a new way of coping, consciousness comes into play. This emphasis on purposefulness reflects the impact of evolutionary theory.